Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and today we're going to discuss the occurrence of subclinical mastitis in dairy cows. Now mastitis is virtually always caused by a bacterial infection of the udder, and 99% of the time this disease occurs when bacterial exposure at the teat end exceeds the ability of the immune defenses of the cow. Never forget, the most important immune defense of the cow is simply having and maintaining a healthy teat end. But sometimes the bacterial exposure at that teat end exceeds the ability to resist it and then the disease mastitis develops. This is a bacterial infection of the secretory tissue uh, of the cow. And just like any other bacterial infection of any other um, organ system, these bacteria can cause either subclinical disease or clinical disease. Now subclinical disease, and subclinical mastitis in particular, is defined as a bacterial infection of the udder. The milk appears normal, but it contains excessive numbers of inflammatory cells. Now these inflammatory cells are simply a type of white blood cell called a neutrophil, and they're called to the point of infection in the udder in order to engulf and destroy the bacteria. There's no other reason for them to actually migrate from the bloodstream into the udder unless they're called there by the cow's immune defenses. So when we find um, excessive numbers of these inflammatory cells in the milk, we can be rest assured that a mastitis infection has occurred. And when these inflammatory cells, these neutrophils, actually successfully invade the udder, we don't call them neutrophils anymore we tend to call them somatic cells. So that's why often people will refer to the somatic cell count as a measure of mastitis in dairy cows. Now the somatic cell count in milk from healthy udders is very low and it is very consistent. In fact, the somatic cell count from uninfected quarters and uninfected cows is usually less than 200,000 cells per mil. In fact, in uh, First lactation animals, we expect the somatic cell count to be well under 100,000 cells per mil. And some research that was performed 10 or 12 years ago actually demonstrated that the somatic cell count from bacteriologically negative quarters is often well under 50,000 cells per mil. So when we see a somatic cell count that exceeds 200,000 cells per mil, we can be quite confident that the only reason we'd have those somatic cells in the milk is because we have a mastitis infection. So because these somatic cells only come into the milk in response to an infection, when we find them in bulk tank milk, we can be confident that there's cows within the dairy herd that are infected with subclinical mastitis infections. And the only way to determine who those cows are is to actually perform an individual cow somatic cell count test. Now when we think about measuring somatic cells, there's several myths that I want to dispel. Somatic cells are not affected by breed of the cow. They're not affected by milk yield unless the cow's producing a really small amount of milk, well under 15 pounds of milk. They're not affected by stage of lactation of the cow unless the cows in late lactation are, are more prone to have more mastitis infections. Somatic cells are not affected by nutritional management unless um, you're dealing with uh, selenium or vitamin E deficiency, which reduces the um, ability of the cow's immune system to respond, and they're not affected by other cow diseases. And the reason they're not affected by other cow diseases is those neutrophils will simply go to the point of infection. And so if there's no infection in the udder, those neutrophils, or as we call them in milk, somatic cells simply won't go there. Now somatic cells are affected by management practices that expose teats to bacteria that cause mastitis. And those management practices um, can result in exposure to bacteria that are in milk that came from the infected udders of other cows. We call that exposure to contagious bacteria. Or those bacteria could come from the environment that the cows live in. In that instance, we refer to that type of bacteria as environmental bacteria. So mastitis is caused by both contagious and environmental bacteria. And we've done some studies in Wisconsin uh, where we've taken milk samples from cows with high somatic cell counts to see just what types of bacteria are prevalent. 
Now when we take these milk samples from cows, about 50% of the time we'll find that these high somatic cell count quarters are bacteriologically negative. And we expect that because um, these high somatic cell counts indicate that we've had the immune system respond to the quarters and what that tells us is that there's simply too few bacteria in that milk sample for us to be able to detect them in the laboratory. So about 50% of the time they're culture negative. But at the other 50% of the time, we typically find mostly gram-positive bacteria. The most prevalent types of bacteria that we find causing subclinical mastitis are coagulase-negative staphylococci, environmental streptococci, and then about 12% of the samples we'll find um, in, the, in this population are usually about staphylococcus aureus and a few streptococcus agalactia. Now in organic dairy herds, Animals that are affected with these two bacteria, Streptococcus agalacta and Staphylococcus aureus, cannot be expected to spontaneously cure, and we would recommend that in most instances these animals would be culled from the dairy herd so they can't spread the infection to other cows. All right, how should we use this information? Well, first of all, if we don't measure disease, we can't manage it. So all herds should test for subclinical mastitis using an individual cow somatic cell count test. There's several options for this. The most uh, common and easiest to use is probably the DHIA monthly somatic cell count option for herds that are enrolled in DHIA. We highly recommend this. But if you're not enrolled in a um, monthly testing program, there are some cow side tests that are available. You can use the individual cow California mastitis test, you can use Supporta SCC, or you can use the direct cell counter. If you're interested in any of these tests, check with your veterinarian or um, your extension agent in your area, and they can help you find out where to get them. When you're testing cows for somatic cell count, the goal should be to have less than 15% of the herd exceed 200,000 cells per mil. And even fewer cows at their first monthly tests should exceed that threshold. In fact, we'd like to see less than 10% of the cows in their first month of lactation above 200,000 cells per mil. All right, so what should you take back to the barn? First of all, there's no way to identify how many cows have subclinical mastitis unless you test the milk and the cows for somatic cells. Test each cow regularly and use that information to make sound decisions about managing your herd. Secondly, subclinical mastitis is caused by a variety of pathogens and you must take milk samples from cows in order to determine which bacteria are causing the disease in your herd. Once you determine the type of bacteria in your herd, you can work with your veterinarian and other advisors on an individualized mastitis control plan. <music>